Boy, if that doesn't get you hyped and ready for camp, I don't know what will. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our March pre-camp webinar for Camp Rotary. Uh, we have a lot to cover this evening, so we are going to jump right into it. Uh, on the call with us tonight uh, is uh, Ken McCaffrey, our Assistant Camp Director of Program, uh, Kyle Lachana, our Camp Commissioner, uh, Rick Kimmel, our Assistant Camp Director, is uh, unfortunately not able to make it uh, with us this evening. Uh, he had to uh, stay uh, and work overtime um, for his school district. And then I believe Sean Henneman is on the call, the uh, uh, Assistant uh, Scout Executive Program and Outdoor Adventures Director. So I uh, want to thank all them for logging on with us this evening. Tonight's agenda, um, like I said, we have a lot we're going to be covering. Uh, we're going to go over uh, the remaining payment schedule, how to conduct a pre-camp parents meeting. We're going to talk about the opportunity for pre-camp swim checks, uh, highlight some of our uh, camp uh, programs. We're going to talk about CPAP machines and other electrical requirements that uh, you may need while you're at camp. Uh, talk about the use of vehicles in camp. And then we'll talk about uh, some needs that camp has as we move into the summer season. And finally, we'll wrap it up with a question and answer period. If this is your first time joining us for a webinar, uh, just a couple housekeeping things. Uh, all attendees on the webinar are in listen mode. Uh, that means that you uh, can't uh, jump on and, and make any comments, uh, raise your hands or anything like that. Uh, but what you will have access to throughout the evening is our chat feature. Um, as questions arise, as we go through the slideshow, um, please take a moment to put those into the chat. Um, Kyle and Ken uh, will work on answering those um, while I do our presentations, um, and then I'll jump on when they are presenting. Uh, and then we'll answer anything that uh, we may uh, not get to right away at the end of the presentation. Uh, if we don't get to your question, um, it's possible that it just got skipped. The chat typically fills up pretty quickly. Um, just send that to us in an email, excuse me, in an email, and we will get that answered for you. Uh, we will be recording this webinar this evening, and we will post it and this slide deck on the michiganscouting.org website um, for you to revisit or utilize with other members in your unit. So with that, uh, we're going to jump right into the agenda, and we are going to talk about the camp payment schedule. Uh, we are coming up on our third payment, uh, which is going to be due April 1st. Um, that is going to be a uh, 100, let's see if it'll click here, here we go. Um, it is going to be a uh, $125 payment per person um, for your youth that are attending camps. Uh, there is no adult fee uh, due at this time. To make that third payment, uh, you will have to log in to the URL there on your screen, click on lookup and look up registration, which will be in the right hand corner of the screen. And then make sure to have your registration number and the email address associated with that registration ready to go. When you make those payments, you will have two options for paying. One is using an e-check, um, which is a routing and an account number. And that can be a checking or a savings account. There is no fee to utilize the e-check feature. You also have the option of using a credit card. Um, and if you do use a credit card, there will be a 2.75% convenience fee. Uh, on every transaction, and that convenience fee is non-refundable. So just know that uh, when you go in to make those payments. Um, like I stated to earlier, uh, for existing registrations, $125 is now due for each youth participant. That will put their total payment uh, to date uh, to $225 out of the $350 um, that is due. Um, if you have not yet confirmed your registration, and there are still seven of you out there, um, please make sure that uh, you log in and uh, make your payment. The system will make you pay up to where we are in the registration period. So if you have not confirmed that, you will need to pay $50 per adult slot and $225 per youth slot. 
If you are having issues in getting those payments and confirmations in, please reach out to me. Um, email is best um, as I am on the road quite a bit. Uh, but uh, that email is andrew.right at scouting.org. And I'll ask Ken or Kyle to put that in the chat so you guys can copy that down. Um, your final payment is going to be due May 1st. So just keep that in mind. That'll be a final $125 per youth camper, a uh, final payment of $110 for all of your full-time adults, and $33 per day for your part-time adults. After May 1st, uh, any payment that is not fully up to date, uh, there will be a $50 late fee that the system will automatically apply uh, making your uh, cost for a scout to come to camp $400. Um, so please make sure that you're getting that payment in on time. Um, and please also note that late fees do not apply to new scouts or any uh, arrow of light crossover scouts that you have coming into your units, which I know many of you have because I've been on the phone with many of you uh, just in this past week, uh, making sure that we still have space for your crossover scouts to come to camp. Just a reminder, um, we do have the uh, availability of camp scholarships. Uh, those youth need to be registered with the Michigan Crossroads Council and already registered to attend uh, scout camp this summer. Uh, applications are available online right now at the URL at the bottom of your screen. Um, and if you want to get in on the first round of awards for scholarships, you will want to get those turned in by April 1st. Um, after April 1st, you can continue to turn in scholarship applications. Um, in fact, you can turn those in until May 30th. Um, and as uh, award money is still available, after that first April 1st uh, award, uh, we will continue to award scholarships uh, as they are available and as uh, deemed appropriate by the Scholarship Allocation Committee. Uh, if you have uh, further questions on scholarships to go to camp, again, visit that URL that's down there at the bottom of your screen. Probably the uh, most important topic of this evening is our uh, how to run a pre-camp parents meeting. Uh, April is the time frame when you should be looking at communicating with your parents about what your plans are for summer camp. Uh, typically, your arrow of light crossovers are uh, now in your unit and uh, make sure that everyone is on the same page. Um, so why do we host a pre-camp parents meeting? Uh, it's real simple. Parents that are informed uh, as to why your unit goes to camp, um, which is obviously to supplement your unit program um, and provide advancement opportunities. Um, but parents who understand why their units go to camp uh, typically let their scout go to camp. Um, so if you have scouts that just don't come to summer camp, uh, ask yourself, have you had a parents meeting? Um, because there you have the opportunity to answer their questions about those things that you see on your screen, such as health and safety, food and special diets, camp programs, fees and payment deadlines, um, and who the unit leadership is going to be uh, uh, in charge of their scouts while they are at camp. Um, the more scouts that go to camp, the more successful your unit is, and the more scouts that typically will stay in the program. Uh, the agenda for a parents a night, um, it should promote scout attendance to summer camp. Again, I can't stress this enough, making sure that they understand that their scout going to camp uh, is beneficial to their overall scouting program uh, on a year-round basis. Um, it's recommended that units should have some sort of camping exhibit and demonstration. So let the parents see what's going to happen. Set up a troop tent, uh, show them what your, um, patrol site is going to look like, um, have videos of previous trips to camp that they can watch and see, um, have your scouts put together slideshows. There's lots of things that you can do at this parent night that will also meet advancement requirements. Um, for things such as communications where they need to make presentations, public speaking, etc. Um, so look for ways that you can utilize um, your scouts um, to host this event. 
and then uh, also give them uh, some information and ability to track their advancement. On your screen now, and I will uh, leave it on there so everyone can take a screenshot or write it down. Uh, but this is uh, what we strongly suggest you utilize as your agenda for your parent uh, pre-camp meeting. Um, you should have an opening ceremony, again, done by the senior patrol leader um, as the youth leader in your unit. Um, the troop committee, scoutmaster, uh, chartered organization representative, um, whoever your key adults are in your unit, um, should then do some sort of welcome and explain why you are there. Uh, that's when you'll want to have that camp promotional material. Uh, this can be uh, a copy of this slideshow or any of the other slideshows we've had. It can be the video that we showed at the start of tonight's meeting. It can be videos that you have set up as units. Again, set up a, a mock campsite. Let your parents see uh, as much as they can so that they can understand the importance of scout camp. And then the scoutmaster or the person who will be acting as the scoutmaster at resident camp, uh, they should uh, go through what you see there as check marks. Camp selection. Why does this camp fit the unit's needs for this year? Every camp is a little bit different. Um, so it's, it's important to know why you chose the camp that you chose to go to. Uh, what dates you're going to be attending camp, what campsite and why. Uh, who is your camp leadership? Do you still need camp leadership? Um, this is a great opportunity to get that new parent involved, uh, maybe registered with your unit and come to camp to help provide leadership. Um, we have lots of programs at camp for uh, those new leaders in your unit. Uh, they can come to camp and they can complete introduction to outdoor leadership skills. Um, is just one opportunity that is available uh, to adults that come to camp. Uh, you should talk with your uh, parents about the ability to save for camp. Uh, spring popcorn sales, the Michigan Crossroads Council hike-a-thon. Um, there's all sorts of opportunities to raise money to come to camp uh, in addition to um, those camp scholarships that are available. Uh, how to register if they're gonna if you're gonna run the registration through your unit, uh, that's fine. If you're gonna utilize Parent Portal, make sure that the parents understand how Parent Portal is going to work. And then finally, make sure that you're covering the DHS registry clearance rules um, for everyone that is coming to camp. We touched on those a couple months ago. You will be receiving an email with uh, more details. Um, this, uh, this coming weekend, um, but please remember that the DHS clearance is now an annually required form. All previous year's forms are no longer valid. You will need to apply for a new DHS form every year that you come to camp, uh, but again, please be on the lookout for that email. Uh, it is going to uh, come out uh, to all of our people that are registered for camp this weekend. Um, if you have further questions on that DHS registry clearance, um, simply email uh, me or a member of my team, and we'll be happy to uh, walk you through that process. Give your parents the opportunity for a question and answer period. Just like we do on this webinar uh, each month, um, we get a chance to answer as many of those questions that arise as we can. Um, so give your parents the chance to do the same and then make sure that your senior patrol leader and his troop or her troop uh, complete a closing ceremony, again, so your parents can see everything that your unit does as a unit. Whew. Okay, so we're going to move on from the pre-camp parents meeting agenda, and I'm actually going to turn the uh, presentation here over to Ken McCaffrey. Uh, Ken is going to talk about uh, pre-camp swim checks and then go into some program and camp highlights. So, uh, Ken, I will uh, pass it off here to you. Okay, take a break for a second. And go to another slide, too. All right, once again this year, it worked so well last year, we will be offering pre-camp swing checks. So, you'll be able to do these on your own. You have to get approval through the Aquatics Committee which is, I also believe is going to be with, dealing with Greg Zidane. 
to get permission of who can administer these tests. So if you click on that link right there, which I'm sure Andrew can put on the chat so you can copy a lot easier to get that approval. Also, our camps will be having a day during the beginning of summer to take these tests. So at DBRA will be May 21st, Cole Canoe Base on May 28th. Gerber Scout Reservation and Camp Rotary will be June 11th. You can register online for those tests at the link there at the scouting event, Swim Test 2022, which I'm sure we can get on the chat too. All right, next up is into program highlights. There we go. So going right from Swintex into Aquatics, also known as Waterfront. It is located on our beautiful Lake BB. It is a over 50 acre lake that is privately owned by Camp Rotary. It is home to our ever popular iceberg, which should be back on the lake this year, bearing any problems. It also hosts such events as a cardboard boat race, our Canopsco course, Aquatics Ninja Warrior. For those who like to get up early on Wednesday morning, which is not me, at 6.30 you have your Wet Wednesday Plunge. And we also have a numerous open swims for those hot summer days come down and cool off. We'll once again be offering the stand-up paddleboard and snorkeling and a mile swim. We have leader trainings, swimming and water rescue and paddle craft safety. For the scouts, we have merit badges, swimming, life-saving, and a large offering of different boating, boating merit badges. All right, and then on to industrial arts. I have to say this is probably one of my favorite areas. It's where I started at camp. So it is an area that is intended for older scouts that have already experienced most of the other badges. These are a very hands-on and interactive area. It's very challenging to some scouts. It's a hands-on. You will be wiring up different circuits and electricity. You'll be learning about plumbing. We actually have a front half of a car that we use for the automotive maintenance so they can actually get hands-on to an engine. We have welding. You'll actually be welding metal together and making this, I say, giant paperweight with your initials on it by the time you're done with all the different welds. For the first time ever, we will be having an open welding night on Thursday. So any scouts who may just want to maybe see what it's about can go up there and just try their hand at doing some welding with one of our instructors to guide them. This is a great area. I know a few of our staff members and scouts that have gone on to, this is their career now is one of these merit badges and it's because they've learned it at camp. All right, so unless Andrew has some more slides for me, that's all I have. Nope, that's all I got for now. Thank you, Ken. Um, just uh, wanted to touch real quick on those pre-camp swim checks. You do not need to complete them at Camp Rotary. If you want to go to one of the other uh, camps to complete those, you can do so. You just have to make sure to sign up at that link that we provided in the chat. Um, next, I would like to talk about CPAP and other electronic uh, or electric requirements. Um, it is important to note that none of the campsites at Camp Rotary have electricity. Um, we also do not allow for the running of extension cords from any of our buildings into your campsite uh, because they, they uh, uh, can cause a bunch of different hazards, uh, trip hazards, fire hazards, etc. Um, so you will need to plan accordingly uh, if you have a CPAP machine or other device that requires electricity. Uh, that plan could be the use of a deep cycle battery and a converter. Uh, it could be the use of a small, quiet, gas-powered uh, unit. It could be a solar unit and a battery pack. Um, 
So you'll need to plan accordingly for whatever your electricity needs will be for the week. If you do opt for the deep cycle battery option, uh, please know that uh, you can set up a pickup schedule with our ranger staff. They will pick up your battery daily if needed, uh, charge it for you, and return it to your campsite uh, that evening uh, so that you can get through the evening uh, with your required electricity needs. Uh, vehicles will not be allowed in the campsite for electrical use. Again, so please plan accordingly. Vehicles will not be allowed uh, in the campsite for electrical use. Which takes me to our next topic, which is vehicle use in camp. Uh, all personal vehicles, including the tow vehicle, uh, will have to remain in the camp rotary parking lot. And they are not allowed outside of the parking lot without the camp director's approval. Uh, camp Rotary, in case you weren't sure, is the smallest of our four Scouts BSA resident camps. Um, and we need to keep the, and it's also very centrally located. So everything's uh, kind of right in the center of camp. And so we need to do our best to keep our traffic down. That is why our staff does use the smaller vehicles, such as golf carts, et cetera, is to uh, help with the safety of our roads and our campers. Um, your tow vehicle will be allowed to go back into the campsite on Sunday as part of your check-in process, uh, where they can drop the trailer, and then they'll need to return that vehicle down to uh, the parking lot. One of the documents that's available to you on the registration page is the uh, Camp Rotary parking slip. You can see a picture of there on your screen. Um, that parking slip you'll display in your windshield. Um, if you have them with you when you come to camp, it makes your check-in process go a little more smoothly uh, and a little more quickly. If not, we will have them available for you when you get to camp. Um, but we ask that you display that uh, in the windshield of your car so that if there is an issue during the week, uh, we have a way to get a hold of you to let you know that there is an issue with your vehicle. Um, so please make sure to either print those and uh, fill them out and bring them with you to camp or know that you will need to do so uh, as part of your check-in process when you get to camp on Sunday. We do understand that there are instances where a vehicle will need to be used in camp. Um, those instances, again, can only be approved by the camp director, um, and they will only be approved for two reasons, which you can see there on your screen. Uh, you either need to have a state-issued handicap permit, uh, or you need to have a doctor's note stating that the person has limited mobility. Uh, typically, where that second one will come into play is uh, little Sally Scout was uh, playing around before she came to camp, and she fell and busted her leg, and the, uh, they told her that she could still go to camp as long as she had a way to get around. Obviously, those are the types of instances where we will work with you to get your vehicle approved. Um, if your vehicle is approved, you will get a Camp Rotary uh, vehicle use permit, um, which you can see a, uh, a sample of there on your screen. Um, on the back of that permit are all of our uh, rules for use of the permit, including speed limit, where you're allowed to park, um, the fact that you cannot uh, use your vehicle to just transport people all over camp. Um, that permit is only for the person that it's issued to, um, and it pertains to all types of vehicles. That's cars, trucks, vans, SUVs, ATVs, UTVs, side-by-sides, golf carts. If it has wheels and an engine and it moves um, and you are planning on bringing it to camp, you need to make sure that you have that state issued handicap permit or your doctor's note uh, for that to be approved by the camp director. You can either call ahead of time, email ahead of time, um, or we can take care of that as part of your check-in process. If you would like more information on vehicle use in camp, there are about three pages on it uh, in the Camp Rotary Leader's Guide. Um, so next, I want to talk about some opportunities uh, for you to help out at camp. Uh, the first being our uh, mix fix. 
Uh, before I jump into Mix Fix, I do want to say we had our uh, first I Love My Camp Day uh, this past weekend. I want to give a big shout out and thank you to Troop uh, Trace Quince, uh, who came out and uh, repainted the interior of Chipmunk Lodge for us, uh, especially after it had some water damage and repairs that needed to take place this winter. Um, so they were the uh, the only unit that signed up for that uh, camp service day. Um, so please know that we need your help in order to keep camp uh, refreshed and in good repair for everyone that wishes to come and utilize our facility. Um, so thank you to Troop Trace Quince. Uh, again, Mix Fix is on May 7th. Um, this is our biggest event of the year. We had about 150 people come out last year. We're hoping to have about 100 more this year um, with all sorts of projects. Uh, painting, tree repair, and removal. Um, I know that the back stairs behind the dining hall are going to need to be repaired. Um, roofing and electrical and all sorts of other things. So if you have a love for Camp Rotary, if you have a friend that has a love for Camp Rotary, if you have a contractor buddy that just is looking for a way to give back, um, head over to that scoutingevent.com backslash 272 Camp Service Days 2022 um, and register uh, for Mix Fix. Mix Fix will start at about 9 a.m. It goes until about 4 p.m. Uh, we provide you with a lunch. You'll get an event patch. Um, and I believe our Mix Fix committee is working on some trinkets and other giveaways um, for you as well. So uh, please take a look at your calendars and see if you might be able to give back to camp on May 7th. Uh, and then just to get it on your calendars now, we will be having another I Love My Camp Day on November 5th. The I Love My Camp Days are focused on cleaning and maintaining um, versus uh fixing and grunt work. So uh, we'll typically put your unit up in a cabin. Uh, they'll work on cleaning those cabins, uh, cleaning other buildings in camp. Um, in the fall, it'll be prepping around the building for winter uh, as winter makes its way into Camp Rotary, et cetera. So just make sure that uh, that event is on your unit's calendar as a possibility. And it is the exact same registration, Camp Service Days 2022, uh, to sign up for the Mix Fix on May 7th or the I Love My Camp Day uh, on November 5th. Um, and uh, as Chris put in the chat, uh, if you don't want a cabin, that's fine. There is free tent camping um, for all units uh, as part of that event uh, and year round. If there's something that you want to look at doing year round, um, we do offer free camp tent camping uh, to our Michigan scouting units. If you can't make either of those events and your troop is interested in earning service hours, um, simply call the camp director ahead of wanting to make a rental any other time of the year, and we can work with getting you set up with a service project as well. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Kyle, and I'm going to have Kyle talk about our staffing needs. So, Kyle, the floor is yours. All right. So, as you can see, we have our current open positions listed here. Um, the main thing to note is that we have director positions still available. So we're still in need of directors for industrial arts and for scout craft. Uh, those are 18 plus jobs. Um, support staff, we're looking at some cooks, that's 18 and up. Uh, food service, that's 16 plus. Maintenance and custodial staff is 18 plus, another one of those. Uh, camp clerk and trading posts are 16 plus. And we have a variety of instructor positions open. Uh, these are really perfect for that like middle to late high school, early college um, age for scouters or non-scouters that are looking for a summer opportunity to make some money, uh, free room and board while they're there, uh, lodging. I know I myself, I'm in college, so I really appreciate that kind of for the summer, I just come out here and I don't, you know, pay my apartment bill. I come out and I work, um, I go home sometimes. So it's a really good opportunity to get some work experience, especially for those who may not have like fully dipped into it yet. Um, and are looking for a new opportunity and maybe just some independence away from home to get a new experience that they might not be able to have in like the current uh, jobs available to someone who's in high school um, or like early college, which are your more like minimum wage service jobs. So um, if you know anyone that could fill any of these positions, you can direct them to the website. There's an apply link um, in the application. 
Um, that's the general application. So you have to make sure they pick Camp Rotary specifically if they want to work in Camp Rotary, um, as well as interests and areas. So yeah, um, and they do not have to be from the scouting program uh, to work here. They can be outside of the scouting program as well. Thank you, Kyle. Kyle's one of those, uh, uh, I can't call him a kid anymore. He's our commissioner. He, he's, he's a kid to me, uh, but one of those kids that came up through the program, through staff, um, started as a uh, first year camper path instructor, made his way to director um, and showed that leadership needed and necessary to become a uh, camp commissioner. So uh, like he alluded to, uh, you do not have to have a scouting background. You just have to have a passion for what we do. Uh, and typically what I tell folks is if you have to, you have a half a passion, have to have a passion um, for uh, working with and or teaching children. And if you have that, um, it's a great, great, great opportunity um, for you uh, that you get way more benefits than I can even begin to talk about on. Um, we did put that uh, link in in the chat um, for anyone that's interested. We did have a question that came through right before the webinar that's right on this topic. And that is uh, if my scout applies to camp and they are hired to work camp staff, what is the refund policy? And the refund policy is this, uh, if you sent us a quality individual who is going to make our team better, uh, we are obviously not gonna penalize them or your unit um, so if we hire your uh, scout to work camp staff, uh, there will be a 100% refund um, uh, to that scout and your unit registration. So uh, don't worry about uh, if they're already signed up for camp. We're going to make sure that we take care of you there as well. We have only two more webinars before summer camp starts. Uh, the next one is uh, April 20th. And the final one on May 18th, both at 7 p.m., um, utilizing the same link uh, that you use this evening. Uh, you can also go to michiganscouting.org backslash outdoor adventures and sign up so that you uh, get the uh, emails, uh, et cetera, uh, to remind you that this event is coming up. Um, so with that, I'm going to start scrolling back through the chat. Um, and this is your opportunity uh, to put in uh, any questions that you may have. Uh, I'll start with Dan. Uh, Dan, we know that there are some issues with rechartering this year. Um, we are working through those and we are going to work with your unit um, to make sure that uh, you can still get to camp. So um, we know that scouts have to be chartered with the BSA to attend the camp. Um, but uh, that is something that uh, uh, we are going to be working with because uh, there are a lot of those uh, in the system right now that uh, we need to work through uh, to get your unit, one, chartered and in good standing, but two, uh, make sure that we can still get you to camp. So please don't uh, be worried if you're working through recharter issues. We know that those are issues and those are things that we are going to be working through. Uh, Chris wants to know, are there going to be volunteer commissioner opportunities this year? Kyle, I'm going to let you answer that one uh, since uh, uh, there will be, and they uh, will report to you if you want to go into a little bit of detail on what we're looking at there. Yep. So uh, for volunteer commissioners, um, we're going to do it on a week by week basis. So your unit will check in. Um, you can register ahead of time. Uh, you need to email the camp about that and get that sorted out. Um, essentially, you will work with me visiting troops, um, helping keep progress of awards, and uh, just in general, trying to mediate between some, you know, we may have some conflicts around camp and that you'll be able to help out with. Um, so that would be a good opportunity for a leader who's looking to do a little bit more this summer, uh, visit other troop sites, get around camp a little more. Maybe you don't get to see as much as you usually do. So you'll get to walk around um, and help out. So that's something that if anyone is interested in, please contact the camp um, and try to arrange that for the week you will be there. And Kyle, we're working on a sign-up uh, uh, application for those folks that are interested, um, whether you want to be a volunteer commissioner uh, the week that your unit is at camp or if you would like to come to camp for uh, a second week. Um, 
if you uh, if you do sign up and are selected to be a volunteer unit commissioner, um, we will have a place for you to stay for the week. Uh, we will provide you with your meals at no cost to you because you're helping us out. Um, so be on the lookout as we uh, finalize that uh, that application and uh, that we'll blast that out to you in an email um, and we'll also post it on our Facebook page. Okay. Um, one question, when are medical and other forms due and where can we find the paperwork? All of that paperwork is available on the summer camp registration page. Um, I'll ask uh, Ken or Kyle to try and grab that link and throw it into the chat. Uh, but that paperwork will be uh, collected as part of your check-in process. Um, as we uh, talked about in previous month's webinars, um, we have moved away from the vendor that we were working with for getting uh, paperwork in ahead of camp. Um, so that will be part of the check-in process. Uh, in the Camp Rotary Leader's Guide, there is a whole section on check-in, um, which lists uh, those forms that you'll need, um, what order you want to have them in. Uh, but those forms uh, that, are on, are, that are in that part of the Leader's Guide are available under the Attachments tab uh, as uh, uh, part of your registration at the link that Ken just put into the chat for everyone. Uh, Tim asks, are there any mask requirements this year? Currently, no. Uh, again, that is at the discretion of the state of Michigan. Um, the state is opening up in our talks with the Licensing and Regulatory Affairs Department, also known as LARA. Um, they don't seem to think that there's going to be anything stricter coming, but again, uh, they can't guarantee that. Um, but we are operating under the premise that we will have a quote unquote normal summer uh, this year. Uh, and we will not be delivering meals to the campsite. We will be operating our regular dining hall program, uh, again, with the asterisk that uh, the state can change and have a say in that. Um, any changes to uh, the way merit badge registration is done? The answer is no. Um, there is a how-to video that uh, was part of last month's webinar, and it also went out... Uh, sometime this uh, afternoon, I think it was around 1.30, uh, but that came out in an email to uh, all of the uh, unit contacts. So if your uh, unit has an email uh, in their registration, they received an email again with the process for selecting those merit badges uh, and how to do it. And I also know that an email came out from uh, the Michigan Crossroads Council with a bunch of information pertaining uh, to summer camp and there was a link for how to complete that registration in that email as well. Do commissioners drink coffee? That is the first time that I started drinking coffee and I've never turned back. So I'm not sure if Kyle's a coffee drinker, but I have a feeling he's gonna become one real soon. Um, what is the day for Merit Badge sign up? Merit Badge sign up is next Thursday. That's the 24th at 8 a.m. And merit badge registration is on a first come first serve basis. Please remember there's a hundred and some units signed up to come to camp this year. Um, so the reason we go to each camp has its own day is because the server gets bogged down. Uh, the first year we did this uh, with four camps trying to sign up, we actually crashed the server. Um, but your sign up process and your login will typically slow down a little bit. Uh, at the start of that process, just be patient. Please know the system is working uh, and we will do everything we can to take care of you um, as part of that process. Uh, Shannon wants to know what leader trainings will be available at camp this year. Ken, you want to take that one, the trainings that we offer as part of uh, leaders coming to camp? Yep, like I said earlier, for the aquatics area, we will have paddlecraft safety and it was swim and water rescue. You'll be able to do IOLS shadowing and participating with our PATH program, which is our first year program. There's also climb on safely over at our climbing tower. And then we'll also have some computer set up in the dining hall, internet permitting to be able to do any online trainings that you have to yet have completed. Uh, 
Awesome. Thank you, Ken. Um, and there's a full listing uh, uh, of all the adult uh, trainings and programs um, available to your adults that are coming to camp uh, in the Camp Rotary Leader's Guide. Uh, Mark wants to know, will it be one scout per tent or multiple scouts per tent? Currently, we are back to operating normal where you can have multiple scouts per tent. Uh, but again, the state of Michigan can come in at any time and make a change to that. Um, if that change occurs, we will communicate that with you. Um, and I believe that is all the questions that are currently in the chat. I'll give everyone a quick second if they have anything else they want to ask to put that in there. Uh, how are meal, di meal dietary restrictions handled? Um, so there used to be a form that you had to fill out. Um, for those of you that are returning, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, there was a URL with a bunch of information you had to enter in. We have gotten rid of that. Um, on April 1st, uh, or, or after April 1st, when you make your payment, the system's going to have a whole bunch of fields that become required for you to fill in. Uh, address, uh, you know, address, phone number, email. Um, but one of the things that you will be required to put in the system is any allergies and or dietary needs. Um, they, uh, uh, if you don't have any, you simply put in NA, none, no, anything like that. Um, but the system will force you to put something into those fields. And that is where we are going to collect any uh, dietary needs and or food allergies. Um, please note that there was a change to the policy for Michigan Crossroads Council with special dietary needs. Um, if you have a special dietary need, it needs to be for a, uh, you know, a health or religious style reason. Um, my son doesn't like chicken nuggets is not a reason for um, needing a special diet while they're at camp. Um, please take a look at the Camp Rotary Leaders Guide. We will be talking in great detail next month about special diets at camp as well as our food service. Uh, but if you want to get a head start on that, it is in the uh, Camp Rotary Leaders Guide for you to look at. Um, just make sure that those are listed on your registration and they will be taken care of for you while you're at camp. They will be confirmed with you as part of your check-in process um, when you make your way up to the dining hall to receive your seating assignment. Um, Mike wants to know, can you opt for one scout per tent? Uh, the answer, Mike, is your unit can set up however you wish. Uh, just keep in mind things like the buddy system, youth protection, etc. cetera. Uh, but we are not going to tell your unit uh, exactly how they need to uh, utilize the camp space that is provided uh, for them. Carrie wants to know when the menu typically goes out. Our goal is to have that menu out a month from yesterday. So April 15th is when we are looking at having that menu posted. Uh, menus are currently uh, being uh, uh, reviewed from the camp end. They will then be sent off to uh, the dietitians for approval. And we are working with our food vendors to make sure that uh, the menu items that we are providing uh, are healthy, nutritious, um, understanding that there's a lot that happens at camp. So there will be things such as carbs as part of meals because they're going to go burn them off in the afternoon. Um, but uh, that menu look for in about a month, we will let you know when it is posted. It will also be posted on the registration page um, so that you can see uh, what those options are uh, available to you. And uh, our first meal, uh, per Mike's question, uh, is dinner on Sunday. And then we will feed you every meal uh, through breakfast on Saturday. Any other questions? Will adults have access to the internet? Uh, we hope so. Uh, we had a storm that wiped out uh, a bunch of internet at the last, end of last summer. And the internet system that we had in place was, uh, uh, I'll have, uh, Chris can correct me if I'm wrong, but about 16 years old. And so uh, we've had to uh, look at some ways to upgrade that system. Um, I do know that the equipment is uh, here. Uh, we have it in our possession and we will be working to get that equipment installed prior to the start of summer camp um, so that uh, hopefully we can take care of any of your internet uh, needs. Chris says, or older. 
for the, the, the age of that internet. Uh, Mark wants to know when you'll get a confirmation of uh, what your check-in time is going to be. Uh, one of the things we learned from having COVID in camp last year is that the check-in process went a lot more smoothly uh, when we had uh, scheduled arrival times. So we took the uh, learning of that last year and implemented it this year. It is one of the things that uh, is required on your registration. In fact, that your registration won't let you process your payment until you select your preferred times. Uh, those times, just like last year, will be communicated with you at least two weeks prior to your arrival. Um, I know last year, some of those we were able to get out about a month ahead of time, um, but we look at a couple things when we make those selections, uh, distance that you need to travel, the size of your unit, et cetera. Um, so know that uh, we, will, uh, get, uh, we will get confirmation uh, of your arrival time out to you at a minimum two weeks prior to your arrival. Uh, Shannon wants to know what are the requirements for the Camp Rotary Award of Excellence? And the answer is it's a surprise every year. We purposely don't publish those um, because we want your unit to uh, be able to work on those in camp. I know that Kyle uh, in his new role has been working uh, with Rick in his old role uh, to update those, um, but that will be something that you will receive on Sunday uh, as part of your check-in. I think we cover it at the first leaders meeting. Yes, we do. Okay. Okay. Uh, so before we log off this evening, uh, I do have a message that I need to make to everyone on this call. Uh, I want everyone to know this will be uh, my last webinar as the Camp Rotary Director. Um, I have accepted a position uh, with the Michigan Crossroads Council uh, in a promotion uh, to oversee camping operations for all five of our camps. Um, so working directly with our camp and camping directors um, and under Sean Henneman, uh, and that promotion is effective on April 1st. Uh, I will still have a lot to do with Camp Rotary uh, in addition to our other four camps. Uh, so please know that uh, um, I will still be around. You'll still see me. Uh, but uh, I want everyone on this call to know uh, the last eight years have been uh, a pleasure to be your camp director. And I look forward to taking what I have learned um, and from working with all of you in the summer uh, to tie that into my new role um, until we get a new camp director hired, uh, Corey Growth will be uh, serving as the professional in the interim. Um, and uh, Ken McCaffrey and Rick Kimmel uh, will be taking on the summer camp responsibilities. Uh, Rick will serve as your summer camp director uh, and Ken will serve as your assistant camp director uh, overseeing programs. So uh, please extend to Rick and to Ken the same courtesy that you have extended to me over the years. Um, I will be on these monthly calls still. Now I have to be on them for uh, all of our camps. Uh, but uh, I'll be on these calls, but uh, I'll be in that uh, silent background uh, mode. Uh, so I just want everyone on this call to know that and uh, know that uh, while I'm leaving Rotary, uh, Rotary will never leave me. Um, with that, uh, before we uh, depart, uh, see if... Uh, uh, Ken or Kyle, do you have anything? And then if you guys don't, I'll hand it over to Sean Henneman to see if he has anything. No, no I'm good. good. I'm good. good. All right. Sean, anything you have that you want to talk about before we log off today? Yeah. yeah uh, uh, and, 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 Andrew, I just want to thank you. you. Um, incredible, incredible job. job. Um, I just, just want to reiterate you. what um, you said is that you will be around. Um, you know, he's overseeing all the camps, but you'll see him in Rotary quite a bit and he'll be very close to you. Um, you know, Andrew was successful over his uh, long term, um, but a lot of people work with him to uh, make that job great. And I'm just really comforted in the fact that we have uh, all your uh, incredible, you know, uh, summer camp, our year round volunteer leadership to where uh, uh, we won't miss a beat. Yep, we'll miss you, uh, Andrew. But I think you got you build an incredible team there that'll just make it happen. So, um, um, 
you know, I look forward to you making all of our camps in the MCC just like Rotary. So uh, great job and thanks. Thank you, Sean. Um, there, uh, I'm going to put in the chat your uh, contacts for uh, Rick and Ken uh, so that you can uh, uh, forward though uh, any questions that you have to them. Um, I will uh, not be out of pocket till the end of the month. So I know Merit Badge sign up is next week and there's a payment due. If you have issues, you can still email those to me. Um, I'm, I'm not done with my role for about another two weeks. Um, but uh, also know that uh, if something arises or you have questions, my job is to serve you. Um, my email will stay the same. My phone number will stay, stay the same. Um, so if you do have uh, uh, questions or whatever, even after I've left after April 1st, um, please know that uh, my email and my, my phone number are still open to provide you the best camping uh, service that we can. Uh, so with that, I'd like to thank everyone for their attention this evening. Um, and uh, we will uh, hopefully see you all uh, at next month's webinar. Please note that the email for Rick that I just put into the chat uh, is a temporary email. Uh, he is in the process of getting a new email that is specific for Camp Rotary, and we will uh, pass that out to you uh, once we have uh, all of the deep kinks and everything worked out, and uh, uh, we'll pass that out as well. Uh, but until then, thank everyone for logging in, and uh, we will see you next month. Good night, everyone.